What's up gamers? Welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the best shiny hunting locations for ghost Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet so you can get your hands on a bunch of nice ghost Pokemon to add to your collection. Now, this video was not easy to make because we had to wait for day and night because some of the Pokemon kept spawning at different times of the day. So here is a chart on the screen that you can snap a picture of just so you know which ones are going to be constantly during the day and night and which ones are specifically going to spawn during the night. So just keep this as your little cheat sheet on the side or for yourself so you can watch along with the video and use that. So there are four Pokemon that we did not cover in this video. One is going to be the Oricorio Ghost. You can find out how to get Oricorio in the fire video and then you're just going to add a purple nectar to it to make it a ghost Oricorio. That's simple. Annihilate is also not covered because it's not really going to be in the wild so you're going to have to use the fighting video in order to get a Mankey or Primate and evolve it to get into Annihilate. Gimme Ghoul or Golden Ghoul is not going to be in this video because they are shiny locked in the base game of Scarlet and Violet. And Sarah Ledge is going to be evolved from Charcadet, which is also going to be in our fire video. So you can go ahead and check out those videos if you're looking to get those specific Pokemon. Let's keep going. So for this sandwich, I'm going to be grabbing a red onion and a salty Herba Mystica. And of course, those people in the comments below who want to label out the better sandwich that doesn't require salties, please comment down that below because I love that you guys keep writing that on the videos it'll help out some other people so if you guys want different recipes you can check that as well because there's there's just tons of recipes in this game and with that we'll get sparkling power ghost title power ghost and encounter power ghost all at level three all right this is going to be for bramblin and it's going to be in the asado desert now asado desert usually we talk about going to the town to do a reset method but in this case they do not spawn close to the town so we cannot pull this off so the area that i'm going to be running from for these bramblins are going to be from this here to the watchtower here and this entire little middle circle area now the cool thing about bramblins is in the desert at least you can get very lucky and you want a desert sandstorm and i'll tell you why you want the sandstorm to happen while people may be freaking out that oh it's going to be uh, harder to see don't worry because there's a trick in this game when there is a desert and all these bramblins start to fly around the shiny ones actually don't get thrown up in the wind so a very efficient way to shiny hunt these will be in the desert. And when you don't see it flying away in the wind, you'll actually start to know that that is your shiny. Shiny Pokemon don't really despawn. So that is the biggest clue and it's going to be your biggest assistance when it comes to shiny hunting in this game. Otherwise, when it's not sandy, you could just walk around in the area, see what spawns around, wait for the shiny and do your double home trick to zoom in. But I really suggest if you're doing this hunt in a Sado Desert to please Please, please wait for a sandstorm. You'll probably catch it a lot faster by approaching the Bramblin that does not disappear in the wind. But we also have one more spot. The other spot for Bramblins can be done with a town reset in Zappa Pico East. So if you miss the town resetting from the Asado Desert, well, you can pull this off over here. Okay, so doing the town reset method, we just got a shiny right there. <laughs> it just spawned in. You can see the difference between the non-shiny and shiny. Very obvious. So you will get these in this town reset method. I really do like this reset area. It is a nice quick and easy spot. Before we move on, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. And if you want shiny luck for the next five years, you should really subscribe. Really, it works. I'll wait. Okay. Let's move on. Now, we're going to be also hunting Sinisties, and this is also going to be Zappa Pico East, and you can actually do a town reset for these Sinisties because they're going to be amongst the Bramblin. So, in a way, this is a dual hunt location, but Sinisties will be a very important one because a lot of players are going to be looking for something known as Authentic Sinisty, which is a very, very, very rare Pokemon to get. So, you want to be paying attention to the Sinisties that do spawn. You want to be able to zoom in and tell the difference between the non-shiny and the shiny. The shiny is going to be a lot more pinker than this Pokemon over here, than the purple one. So they also come towards you, but I like to just do the simple reset method. So when you get to the town, zap a Pico and pop back out and you should get your Sinistees to spawn around the area. So just pay attention, look around for where they do spawn. There's some of them right over there. And what you need to be aware of is that their location is going to be by the town areas. So around the town is where you're going to get a good amount of them to spawn. So just pay attention to the towns. I know it's not like the best 
synesty spot. Well, but I'll give you another one where you can just primarily focus on these synesties. And when you get your shinies, it's going to be a lot more fun to hunt these. So let's go to the next spot where we're going to be finding these Pokemon. Now, if you come over to Alphernada, you're going to notice that this is the hottest spot for synesties. They are literally everywhere over here. But you're going to have to be zooming in and paying attention because if you are walking away further from the screen, you're going to have a hard time noticing them. So you got to make sure to have your double home button set on your settings so you can really zoom in and see these guys. And when it comes to synesties, the cool part about it is you can do town reset methods over here and you really won't bump into much other Pokemon, especially during the day because these guys do spawn during the day and you really want to keep eyes on them. So if you want to do a town reset, you can find any border around this area. You know, you just want to tap the town like this, Alphernada, pop back out and you will see your synesties spawning. And if you just want to have a completely focused synesty, I do suggest doing some date skipping reset methods in order to pull off getting a synesty a lot easier because you could just reset, 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 reset until you get the right one. So have the sandwich, do a date skip until you get that to show up on your map and that'll be the best way. But otherwise, if you're not hunting them in that particular method, you can simply just tap the town after you see a bunch of these and they're not the shiny ones and see what happens. The cool part is about Alphernada, they are literally surrounding the entire area. You might not even have to just do a date skip. You could just probably walk around the town, see which ones are spawning, take a look at them, make sure that they are shiny or not. But yeah, that's that's the best method you would be able to do when it comes to hunting these synesties. So good luck hunting your synesty and getting your authentic rare synesty using the sandwich method. Okay, so some fun facts for you synesty hunters. This is probably going to be one of the rarest ones to get in the game because to get an authentic mark, you're going to have to see the underside of synesty and see if there's a mark underneath it under the teacup handle that's what's going to tell you a legit one from a fake one so you have to peek underneath and if you see a mark that means you got an authentic synesty if not you got the fake one and that is going to already be a one out of a hundred chance of that happening pair that with getting a shiny pokemon those odds start to increase and start to get even higher and when you want to get even a mark on your pokemon let's just say the rare mark you're talking like one in some couple of millions of chances of that happening so this in fact becomes one of the rarest Pokemon to hunt, and a lot of shiny hunters love this Pokemon. So if you're able to do this hunt, make sure you're checking underside and get your shinies first. Actually, go for the shinies first and then check underneath. And if it's authentic, you're set. And then if it has a mark, oh, you are one of the lucky people in the game. So it just gets very complicated with math. And I'm sure someone in the comments will write down really good math numbers for us here. Just know that it's extremely rare, and that's the easiest way to explain that. Here's a fun fan favorite Pokemon that people want to get, and it's going to be Mimikyu. <laughs> the most favorite ghost Pokemon. It's actually one of the most popular ones in Japan. Yeah, you, as you can see, there are a lot of Mimikyu's by me, and here's exactly the spot where you're going to do it when you have your ghost sandwich. It's going to be in the tag tree thicket, but it's going to be in the location a little more north in this area. So once you're over here, you're going to be looking for Mimikyu. Now, the only issue with Mimikyu is it's going to be very hard sometimes to tell the difference between the shiny and the non-shiny, because when the Mimikyu go into the shade, it looks a little bit off. So probably the best thing that you could do over here is make sure you're using the double home zoom in so you can see the pixel see if it's a little more gray my favorite thing to do is just you know follow a specific path now they spawn solo by solo so you want to make sure that you're not rushing in the area you want to see the spawns that are happening make sure you're also zoomed out so you can see them i like to just rotate around this lake area until i get to see a shiny now i haven't gotten a shiny mimic you yet but this location if i do spend enough time circling around with a ghost sandwich will probably give me the best results to do it what you don't want to use here is the fairy sandwich because it'll be mixed up with impidim. So that's the only problem when you're using a fairy sandwich. So ghost is going to be the most effective. And you see like this Mimikyu looks like it's a shiny, but it, I don't know if it is because it's in the shade. So if I click on it, it's probably not going to be a shiny, right? Yeah, see? You see it looks black and white in the shade. So just be careful and aware of that. Uh, rotate around this lake and don't get tripped up. If you really need to check and make sure if it's a shiny or not, just go ahead and just use the auto battle feature. Your Pokemon will not attack it if it is a shiny. So keep that in mind. That's the best thing that you you can do when you're in this area. So good luck shiny hunting your Mimikyu. So for Sableye, I'm going to be giving you about two to three locations to hunt this thing. The first one's going to be in the Alphernada Caverns right over here. You're going to see a Sableyes. They're going to be the very strong primary spawn inside of here when you do use your sandwich. And the best thing that you could probably do is just walk in and out of this cave or you can find a nice spot to just go back and forth and despawn the whole entire group out because they are everywhere pretty much here. Uh, another location that we can can do is over here in this area. So what you want to do is you're going to head over to the Porto Marinado teleport and just run the 
straight pathway until you reach this nice big looking cave thing here and all you're gonna spot here are a bunch of sable eyes as well so you can walk and explore and that's pretty much the only pokemon that you're going to see inside of here you just can do your loops and laps and despawn them and respawn them you can do exactly whatever you really want to do while hunting these pokemon so this is another spot for sable eye now this is a fun one that it's going to be in the east province area three you're going to head over to this teleport right here at the watchtower and you're going to be facing north once you reach this watchtower and you're just going to walk straight north until you see this little cave right over here of course if it is nighttime pay attention to the ghastlies and the bramblins walking around here as this is our hot spot for bramblins and then you're going to go down into this cave you're going to turn right and over here is going to be a very broken spot when you do turn around it's going to be the wall that is completely glitched out and have tons of sable eyes just coming out of it and because you have the sandwich on there's going to be some sable eyes around you but you're going to see that wall in front of me non-stop just just producing sable eyes at rapid rates this is one of the most broken shiny hunting spots in the game you can just send your pokemon to auto battle them and you could just relax if you do it this way it's more of an afk kind of farm because they're just going to keep coming out the wall while you're hanging out over there so i'm just standing here as you can see my pokemon just auto battling and i can chill and relax but if you want to make things faster you can do what we like to call the picnic reset in this exact spot you're going to set up a picnic clear out all those spawns send out your pokemon and uh then just pack up your picnic and then stand right there and you can double home feature and just watch what spawns out of the wall and the sable eyes will continue to spawn while you are just chilling over there and you can keep doing this until a shiny eventually jumps right out the wall at you and you can grab yourself a nice shiny yellow sable eye if you want to hunt down palo sand sandy gas pretty much this is going to be your spot yeah obviously it's just sandy gas but it'll evolve into a nice palo sand and what you're going to be looking for is pretty much a black piece of sand on the beach that's it they the origin for that is pretty much from elola with the volcanic ash and everything so i think that's where they get the origin but yeah <laughs> anyway so you want to come to the south province area five and why i like this area specifically is because it's one straight line i just have to zoom out in fact i can just walk across the beach and i can have them all spawn in front of me and just like that i already have one <laughs> shiny already see how simple that is that's why uh, i rate these 100 percent guarantee shinies in the title that, that is a reason we make that the title this looks super cool all right let's see what you got oh baby that looks good that is awesome i pretty much like to walk this beach all the way to the end by that palm tree look around see what's gonna spawn and as you can tell it's very obvious to see the shiny pokemon and once i reach the end of the beach pretty much or this this land i'm going to just simply turn around and rinse and repeat this all over again make sure to check every single spawn around you so you don't miss it and then just loop back again and one straight line means you don't have to do that much camera turning only at the edge once you get there now there's an alternate option that you can pull off if you don't want to rock it at this beach you can go over to the lavincia beach which is a lot bigger over here but you just have to rotate your camera more when you're in this area and then once you evolve it you'll get a nice palo sand if you want to be the type of player that hunts for the pokemon spirit tomb here's pretty much what you have to do now this is a static spawn so that means you don't need a sandwich for this it's just going to be a natural spawn that shows up spirit tomb is going to be a complete full odds hunt we're talking one out of 4096 chance for this thing to be shiny so you probably have better odds masuda breeding this thing but again i'm just going to show for the people who want to know how to do this so what you want to do is you're going to see your spirit tomb here right it spawned it's two other locations on the map marked over here and what i'm going to do is i'm going to set up my pokemon and what we want to do is send your pokemon out to just to take it out right it's gone all right that's not a shiny so what you do is then walk all the way out of the spawn range of that pokemon so that way it's not going to be able to spawn in you're going to drop a hard save just like this and once you drop your hard save you're going to close out your game you're going to then go ahead and do a date skip go to another day and if you don't like the date skip method well you could just wait for 11 59 at night and just uh do this when necessary that's it so for those who don't like date skipping that's what you're going to do if you want to shiny hunt it so every night before you go to bed you can just take an attempt and see hey is this spirit tomb going to be shiny knock all the three ones out on the mountain and go check the spots that's a fun nighttime activity if you want to play pokemon every night actually that's pretty cool you can do that and then once you boot up back into your game at the new save spot you're just going to head over to that spot where you took out the spirit tomb and you should be getting a new one so there that is a new one that has spawned and it does not respawn by the way so you just take them out you rinse and repeat that over and over again
again. And just to clarify and show those people that it doesn't respawn, I'm going to move out of the render distance for you guys. And then I'm going to come back just so you can see that, hey, once you take it out, it does not respawn. And yep, it has not come back. So now you know how to static hunt and you can do this for actually every static Pokemon in the game. If you want a very good hunting spot in Pokemon Violet for your Dreepies and your Dracloaks, this is the spot on the map. So it's right by the Fury Falls. It's this little area right here. And uh, this is going to be really good because when you don't have Dragon, you don't have any Dratinis, you have nothing else interfering with you, and you're only going to have Dracloaks and Dreepies, which means you can just hop down here and get to work on shiny hunting. And the shiny is going to be a lot more obvious when you're being able to hunt all of these. So you can just set out your Pokemon, pretty much be sent out and start doing some work and just taking out whatever needs to be taken out, auto battle everything until you get a shiny, or you could just jump to the top, despawn them, and then use the double home trick to, to pay attention and zoom if there is a shiny pokemon as sometimes dreepies are a little bit hard to miss but if you're hanging out down here just auto battling and checking out shinies if they're here this is a very good spot for violet players to get dreepies and dracloaks and i don't doubt that you would have one very fast down here it is a great spot the pit is one of my favorite <laughs> shiny hunting spots in the game they're just gonna spawn these dragons left and right these dragon ghost types so great spot if you are a violet player and you should be able to get a shiny with no problem here if you you spend your time hunting Dreepies and Dracloaks because I know how annoying they are because they spawn everywhere in the game, but now they're all compressed in one spot. If you are hunting Rotom, the best time to do it is going to be during the daytime and you want to head over to Porto Marinada and go towards the lighthouse. Now, the reason why I tell you this is because Rotom is going to be very easy to despawn and respawn uh, because we have a simple trick called the town reset right there. We come back, boom, all the Rotoms start to spawn back in again and all you're going to be looking for is the shiny one in the game so it's not that bad at all you can you can see that they're all spawning here the shiny one's gonna be very obvious it's gonna be a red rotom surrounded by a little bit of yellow lightning around it instead of the orange and blue one so you can just keep doing this over and over again in this spot specifically until you get a red rotom now you don't want to do this at nighttime because the rotom spawns are going to be a lot more less because depending on if your pokemon scarlet or violet you're going to be getting drift blooms or mischievous mixing up into the mix of the Rotoms causing the spawns to be less. So, Rotom Hunters, you want to pull this trick off during the daytime. If you don't really care what Pokemon you spot, well, then you can come here at nighttime and have fun with trying to hunt all of them. But to not be chaotic, I just wanted to let you know do this during the day and look around and make sure you use your double home button. And uh, eventually, you will get your Rotom. We also talked about this in the electric video. So, if you don't want ghosts interfering with your hunt, just uh, check out the electric video and it, it'll be a lot easier. If you just want, if you head over to the Watchtower, by this lake north province area one watchtower and by this area as well in the north province area one this entire green area is going to be really nice uh, obviously get away from the water <laughs> this is going to be really really nice to hunt families of haunter and you'll be also getting families of graveyard and houndstone so it's only families which means you can run around as fast as you want and that's the only things that will spawn so for haunters and ghastlies these are the shinies on the screen and for the graveyards and houndstones these are going to be the shinies and it'll be very obvious to see the gas is going to have a nice blue color and the graveyards and houndstones are going to be having a gold looking color and that's pretty much how you're going to be hunting the shinies in this area you really just want to run around as fast as you can because nothing is going to be bothering you here it's it's just straight up only those pokemon the moment you see the shiny it's going to be very apparent so what i like doing is just full speed from one pokemon center to the other pokemon center and then once i reach the spot wow there's a lot by this pokemon look at all look at look at the, look at that. that's three families right over here so if you want a good spot to hunt houndstones and uh graveyards this is really good along with the haunters and ghastly especially at nighttime if you come here during the day you won't be getting the haunter family with the ghastlies during the daytime you'll just be getting these guys right over here during the day so if you want to solo hunt these guys and run around come here during the day if you want to double hunt or just focus on the ghastlies and haunters come here at night and you should be able to get some nice shiny ghost pokemon over here here's what this area looks like during the day pretty much the north province area one you're just gonna see families of the graveyard show up there we go and as you move further away from this mass outbreak sorry by a ruffled uh mass outbreak there we go you're just
just gonna be all the the houndstones and graveyards that are spawning here because no no more haunters or ghastlies during the day so this is also a very nice and effective way to do some shiny hunting during the day and you can see all the families just spawning up and uh it's really nice because you don't have to deal with anything else here so this is what it looks like during the day in this area and eventually you will get your shiny now if you want a place where you can only just hunt these ghastlies in the game that way you can just not worry about other pokemon being around you this is a great spot and it's gonna be located right over here it's gonna be right in this location by the ruins because ruins like to spawn specific pokemon now we're gonna be going for some ghastlies here so all you gotta do is approach the ruins right here like this and around here should be spawning our ghastlies there they are they spawned in all right a little bit late but they they did show up so these are where all the ghastlies will spawn and to really respawn them out you could just climb up this hill over here just like that despawn out the entire group like this and then you can kind of fly right back in to the ruins again and you'll be getting another squad of ghastlies so that's pretty much all you have to do for ghastlies and shout out to the ruins for being an accessible place for us to solo hunt these things and it's going to be at night of course because ghastlies don't always spawn graveyards to start showing up in this area with with the occasional frost last i've noticed frost last is not that prevalent with the sandwich it barely spawns so it's probably better to do a date skip or wait for 11:59 with the ghost sandwich and see if a frost last outbreak starts or you can try it with the ice sandwich but pretty much if you go to glaciato mountain almost everywhere there's going to be little graveyards showing up sometimes you'll get the occasional frost last, but majority on the floor is always always these dogs are hiding and it's a very hard to really no notice when they show up so i would suggest the better spot is where it's a grassy area and you get the families because it could be annoying to have these guys just keep popping up without you realizing it and keep going into battle but that's just an alternative but i do prefer the family spawns okay so right by artisan there's a good spot where there's going to be a bunch of shuppets so you just have to step out of artisan into south province area three i marked it up by the map over here and look at the amount that just spawned by these trees there's a good amount you can double home zoom to look at at this the shiny for shuppet is going to be green so it's going to be kind of obvious where the shuppet is now there's two sides to the shuppet there's the left side and the right side so you can be paying attention to all those areas and you don't want to miss this pokemon pretty much so you go back to town you can do these completely over and over again um, luckily it's pretty easy just quickly step out into south province area three and you're going to get a bunch to spawn now i'm in scarlet so i also have a bunch of drift balloons here so i got to be on the lookout for yellow but for my shuppets i have to be on the lookout for the green one so you can repeat this over and over again until you happen to get your shiny shuppet but this is definitely a very very nice spot to go hunting for this pokemon so for violet players that go to artisan west it's going to be a lot easier to hunt because you don't have to deal with the drift blooms that spawn in over here you're just going to find these shuppets so violet players are going to have a lot easier time focusing on catching these shuppets by just doing a, a respawn in and out over here as compared to the scarlet players who have the the drift blooms and the shuppets mixed now if you're a pokemon scarlet player and come over to alfernada we did talk about this being a nice synesty spot but at nighttime it turns into this place called Bennett city and uh drift blooms and drift blims pretty much the the technique to get these guys to soft reset is simply doing the town reset method you could just head over to town they're coming at me oh don't gotta worry about that and then pop right back out and they should start spawning around me again now for the Bennett, this is what the shiny is going to look like so it's going to be a little bit more on the bluer side and for drift blims and drift blooms you're just going to be looking for yellow balloons that's how you're going to be able to identify the shiny now when it's nighttime you can make a little bit of rotations around the town if you want to see a bunch of them and not just be stuck to one thing that's an option you have there's all the bonnets really cool to see and the drift blooms so you could possibly do the town respawns find a good corner where you see a good amount to spawn in and then you could spawn them out be aware there's also some synesties here and there in the area so keep in mind you might bump into them so it, it becomes a little bit chaotic but this is where it's going to be very obvious to see the bonnets and the drift blooms also as you're rotating around you might bump into the graveyard family so yeah pretty much that's what you have to do when you're in alfernada if you are a pokemon scarlet player and that is the hot spot to get yourself a bonnet in pokemon violet at night you get a lot of bonnets just showing up you don't have to worry about any drift blooms you notice there's no miss mages around or miss drevis so it's going to be a lot easier to hunt these bonnets by doing the town reset. So yeah, you just have to touch the town like this to get Alfernada reset and then come back out and you should get all your bonnets to start spawning. So it shouldn't be too hard over here to pull this off. So Violet's 
gonna have a lot better time being able to hunt the bonnets than having to deal with a bunch of drift blooms and drift blend families so for pokemon violet players if you want a bunch of misdreavus to be spawning around the area this is probably the best spot it's gonna be right over here by this little water body you have to come down to cortando west and just come right down across you will get interference of no dreepies there'll be no other pokemon bothering you just a bunch of these misdreavus everywhere around here and all you gotta do is simply just despawn that entire group out kind of like that move away from the water and then once you move away from the water you just head right back to that spot again stand over there or you can do picnic resets totally up to you by throwing out a picnic closing out a picnic and you just have to wait here until you get your shiny mischievous to appear so this is a very very nice hunt and i feel like violet players have better time with ghost pokemon not mixing up with other spawns so violet players you're pretty lucky when it comes to these spawns this is a great spot and hopefully you can grab a nice mischievous here and then eventually evolve it into miss Aegeus. now if you come over to the lake casaroya area in pokemon violet you're going to be getting a lot of family spawns of dreepy and dracloak which is pretty nice which means you can run as fast as you can but you gotta have to pay attention if you do bump into the shiny so violet players you can literally just run enjoy yourself and go full speed while these families spawn on the left just make sure you're paying attention to the shinies because this is a very fast run as opposed to the pit that we've talked about so there we go families are going to keep spawning around this area and pretty much you can just despawn them in and out by rushing and seeing what spawns and what doesn't spawn and get to the edge and come back so just keep spawning in the families check if they're shiny and rinse and repeat for this pokemon now, if you go and do this little route in Castle Roya Lake at nighttime in Violet, you'll be getting the Miss Magus and the Miss Dreavis. So you'll be seeing these along with the Dracloaks and the Dreepies. But you need to be aware that they don't spawn as often, but they are a family group, which is kind of nice because you could just zoom by really fast and just hope and, and pray that they do spawn as you are traveling this route. But that is pretty much the way to do it at nighttime. So you pop the sandwich, you make sure it's nighttime, around this area and you will get entire families of mischievous and mismagius make sure you are looking at the shinies and paying attention they are a much more greenish mischievous yes mischievous is a lot more green pretty much it's like the same thing as Flattermain. now you can hop over here as well these little islands over here on the side might have them so you can do a little rotate see if they despawn respawn and keep going around here at nighttime to possibly see the families but their dreepies and dracloats do love to take over the area unfortunately though for pokemon violet players now if you're playing pokemon scarlet there are two ways to hunt down fluttermane one is going to be the glitch method which is coming to this exact spot in research station number four during the day with a ghost sandwich and you can see that there is literally nothing absolutely nothing spawning in this cave right now and the reason why is because the only pokemon that will show up during this cave in scarlet is a shiny fluttermane it is a glitch in this game it's not really anything complicated to do it's not like we have to go and break the game to do this you just literally have to have a ghost sandwich during the day and when that fluttermane does show up in the game it has to show up of course you have to still run around until it spawns then it'll spawn another fluttermane and it kind of causes a chain of unlimited fluttermane that are shiny but if you're not comfortable with this, you can come back here at nighttime. And at night, when you have the sandwich, you're going to see a bunch of Fluttermane everywhere. And what you could do during the nighttime is fly over to this area and go to this rock. And you'll be getting a bunch of regular Fluttermane spawning. And you could despawn and respawn them at this big rock until you get your shiny one to show up. But if we're doing the glitch method, we are going to stick with running around till we find a Fluttermane. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. Okay, and... And as you can see on the map, there is nothing else that has spawned except the shiny one. So I'm just going to hop in to battle with it. A uh, side note, when you do see this Pokemon, or if you just try hitting down the ZL button on your remote, look at this. You can see the other ones in the background, like where they're supposed I don't know what's about this glitch, but look at, look at that. There's other ones in there momentarily and they go away. There's another one right there. It spawned. Hey, we got a second one in the background. There we go. The glitch worked. It spawned in another Fluttermane. Okay, it's working. I'm just gonna run away from this one you can still see the other one in the background by the way let me interact with this one there we go there's one the glitch worked 
So for those who want to see these Fluttermanes that I caught are completely different, different stats and everything. And yeah, they, that, that they are. They're right there. Two different completely shinies that are able to work via the day ghost sandwich glitch. If you don't like doing this glitch, you can simply just do this at nighttime. That's it. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to also check out this one over here because there's more shiny locations that you need to know. Click on this.